wrestle with the unseen for the aftermath of October 18th. Collectively and individually, we can make a difference. The work ahead of us is not easy and will require willingness on all of our parts to come together, seek meaningful solutions that in turn reside lasting cultural change. That is what I think we all want, and I hope you will join us in that effort. Good evening, everybody. I'm Steve Jones, the president of Antioch University, New England. I've been at this post for 18 months. Admittedly, I'm still a short-timer here in the Keene community. But already, I have a very real stake in this community. I care about the city of Keene, its reputation, its quality of life, its vibrancy, and its future. One of my roles as president of Antioch is to make sure that we as an institution do our part as stewards of this place, this Monadnock region. And that means engaging meaningfully in the life of King, and hence it's my privilege to assist in this manner this evening. Yeah, I know you can't see it, take my word for it. This is a 1991 report from the Governor's Commission on the Future of New Hampshire. It's titled, New Hampshire, My Responsibility. And what I want to do is use this as kind of a source of a few modified quotes. And I'm liberally borrowing from both the two co-chairs of the commission and then-Governor Judd Gray. First, from the letter in the book from the two co-chairs. And again, I'm modifying the quote, but presenting it as a quote. The two gentlemen said, our vision for Keene, they didn't really say Keene, for New Hampshire, post-October 18, 2014, combines the strong citizen participation for which we are renowned with our unique cultural heritage. The initiatives we will develop this evening and beyond are intended to be specific and pragmatic steps toward addressing a significant community issue. Keen citizens must work together to renew our community and preserve its living vitality through sustainable action. Keen's future clearly depends upon the willingness of its citizens to take responsibility for the future. And then borrowing again, again from Governor Judd Gray's charge to that commission, I'm using, I'm using quotation marks, but again, I cheated. When we look around us, what do we see, what do we experience as part of life in Keene? What is good, what is bad, and what do we care about? What makes Keene special and unique? What gives our people a sense of place? How have our citizens, through their attitudes and approaches to problem solving, in response to community needs, shaped our institutions, government, and infrastructure? Will our small town heritage and small scale city life still be available in the future? These are among the types of questions we need to ask ourselves end quote. It's now 23 years later. The focus this evening is on a single New Hampshire community. The issue is narrower, but the stakes here in Keene for all of us are just as high. The grassroots traditional approach and techniques used then are the same here this evening and beyond. Like the 1991 Commission on the State, the future in Keene is yours, it's mine, it's our responsibility. You're part of something far larger than just this forum this evening. This forum seeks advice relative to an important issue of the day, the Pumpkin Festival and its future in Keene, in large measure. This forum is an element of a crucial community challenge 
This forum is a step toward, a large and long step toward resolution. It reaches beyond this thing we call hope. We can't simply hope the future will be better. Hope alone assures nothing. Instead, this forum must lead us collectively to action, informed action, responsible action, deliberative action, and collective action. My role is pretty simple. I'm acting as the facilitator, the objective moderator, the timekeeper, and the sergeant at arms. And here's how we'll operate. You've seen and you received the instructions as you walked in about the need to sign up to speak. Review the process if you haven't already. Fill out and submit a speaker's card. There's a table at the back. Staff will bring the cards forward. If you fill out a card and wish not to speak, that's okay. Your remarks we will still enter into the form record. In fact, we're having an open comment period that is described on some of the materials you picked up through December 12th. All of those will go into the forum record. Please, if you would, review the speaker's guidelines. Speak only at one of the two microphones on this floor, and I believe there are two on the balcony. When it's your turn, and what we're going to do to queue up, in just a moment, I'll read the first three names in order, and each time somebody completes a statement, I'll read the next name so that person can come to a microphone and be prepared to speak. If you would, state your name clearly. I will read it. However, I don't guarantee I'll read it correctly. <laughs> Tell us where you live. We're going to have a three-minute limit per speaker. I'll signal when you've talked for two minutes, and I'll advise and ask you to wrap up when there are 15 seconds remaining. Please be concise. Be respectful, if you would, of the ideas and positions of others. Please do not personalize your comments. That is, don't cast verbal stones at individuals. I urge you to use civil and appropriate language. Remember, as Dr. Hewitt said, and as the mayor said, we are one community. You may suggest questions for the forum and the body who will review the questions later. However, we'll not be answering those questions tonight. If you would see the background statement that most of you received as you came in. Your question, in fact, may have already been answered. You have only a single trip to the microphone until all other first speakers have been to the microphone. As your turn approaches, someone else may have already made the point you wish to make. If so, in the interest of giving everybody a chance, please pass. So the general guidelines, these are pretty simple, whether you're here or in church or at some other public meeting. Turn off or silence all electronic devices. There is water available to my right, your left rear. Restrooms, out that door, down the hall, on your right, past the lockers. Fire exits are pretty clearly marked. Take a moment, look around, make sure you know where they are. As the mayor said, we plan to adjourn at 8.30. Now I'm going to read the first three speakers, and if you would, come up to a microphone. The very first speaker is Harry Boynton. The next one is Morris Whitney. And thirdly, Emily Fennis. So I turn it over to Mr. Boynton. Good evening. Uh, I'm Harry Boynton, and I do not live in Keene. I have worked in Keene for 45 years, and uh, I'm active with fire mutual aid and other things. But I am concerned about the community of Keene. I was recruited by Let It Shine in 2011 because of my years of experience in emergency services and emergency radio communications. They asked me to be their representative in the Emergency Operations Center in City Hall during the festival. My experience has been 
fire service, fire chief, director of uh, fire mutual aid. I'm not here to defend the festival. Uh, I really don't think it needs defending. In my opinion, the festival had no connection or responsibility for the lawless act that took place. In recent years, out-of-state out of promoters have staged wild parties in neighborhoods outside the footprint of the festival. People were injured from foolish actions of others at these parties. Emergency personnel put themselves in harm's way to treat them, <clears throat> and many building codes and fire restrictions were violated, but they were contained to private property. This year, weeks in advance, an out-of-state disc jockey and promoter of wild parties, whose purpose is to film wild parties for profit, started using social media to lure people to a wild party in Keene on October 18th. Early afternoon on the 18th, a large crowd started to gather in the backyard of a Keene residence ready to party. When the landlord became aware of the party, the crowd was removed from the property, as they well should have been. This left a large group of people, along with a combination of alcohol and immaturity, roaming the streets with no place to party. The mob mentality is starting to set in as they feel deprived the right for their well party. They did not come to Keene for the Pumpkin Festival. That's a family event. They came to party. I commend the police and fire for putting themselves in harm's way and controlling a situation that is usually not uh, the norm in this city. We can't change what happened. We, uh, I do have some suggestions. So I'm going to have to skip some of this, running out of time. The, uh, my suggestion, they, want, they came here to party. Give them a place to party, whether it be Keene State College Athletic Field, uh, wherever, where they're away from city residents. That's what they came here to do. Let them do it. Let them let their promoter seconds to wrap up, and you can turn in your comments. Okay. Let their promoter advertise at this party where the residents of Keene do not get hurt. Thank you.
And that's the same thing that we have all of our holidays throughout the season, throughout the years, uh, have, uh, have been changed from lack of one or another idea that adults have come up, not the preteens themselves, but for the adults. Just one minute, but, no, just one minute remaining. Okay, that, that's, that's enough for the Pumpkin Festival, and I had a little, uh, a little, uh, 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 to say on the, uh, on the riots, but I think a committee could be uh, drawn up with the, with the college in mind for about 43 people. That would be 10 freshmen, sophomores, seniors, and juniors, uh, a uh, representative from the uh, administration, uh, one from the uh, police department at Keene, and one from the uh, uh, security forces of uh, uh, Keene State. And uh, this could be something that would be, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's get the violence and uh, uh, violence, drugs, and alcohol uh, out of being safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lee. And as Emily comes to the microphone, we need for Becky May to work her way to the one in the microphone. <coughs> Oh, Emily. Hi, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Um, my name is Emily Fennis, and I'm sorry for my voice. Um, I'm a junior here at Keene State College. I'm originally from Long Island, so I'm sorry if I have an accent. Um, so I obviously chose Keene State for a reason. I instantly felt a connection to not only the school, but the city as well. I knew that I had joined a family that I would be a part of for not only these four short years, but for life. This city has given me so many opportunities in these three short years, and I'm looking forward to the countless ones to follow. I'm sorry for the horrendous actions of a select few, and although I was not a part of the activities, I spent the day um, helping King Kiwanis park cars for the festival. I have been affected by the events of October 18th. I did, however, see the immediate attempt to clean up